My daughter Cassie's been a, a drug addict, I think she's, since she's about 15 years old. My heart is broken. I know drugs are a horrible thing. Back in the 70s, early 80s, I admit that I used to do a lot of cocaine. Last year, Cassie needed a place to stay, so I let her move in with me. She was a total disaster. I came home from work several times, and there'd be guys in my spare bedroom. They'd all be shooting up, smoking crack. She would meet up with these guys, and she would call them dates. She was selling herself, so she could uh, supply her habit. It made me feel terrible. Twice I had to put her in a shower. She passed out. I think she passed out because she mixed the two drugs, crack cocaine and heroin together, and I think that's called speedballing. Cassie lived with me, it was just too much. All them drugs laying on the table all the time. You know, I used to use years ago, and you know, it did trigger me. I just slip in my sobriety. I used cocaine with her twice when she lived with me. I made a horrible mistake. I had enough when I saw my daughter take a spoon, heat up heroin, and then put it in a needle and inject herself. I was at the end of my rope, I was done. Cheryl thinks I'm the bad guy for allowing Cassie to live with me. She thinks I'm a bad guy because the drugs with her. I'm the good guy. I believe I kept her alive. Had she not lived with me, she would have died on the street. Well, Dave, I'm glad you're here. And you're here because you are fighting for her sobriety, right? Yes. Are you concerned that she's gone so far that her life is in jeopardy? Very much so. I'm, I'm worried that in the next call will be to the morgue. And if she's gonna, if she, they have problems, she has problems living with my wife, my, ex, my ex-wife, and she, had, she has nowhere to go, so she'd be on the street. And being on the street, what, what can you, where can you go, what can you do? You'd have to sell your body, get drugs, it'd, it'd be, actually, I know it'd be, it'd be me going on to the morgue, she'd be OD. I used to always say, let her be on the streets, because that'll force her into treatment. Because you were letting her party in the house, you were letting her drink in the house. Not saying I did all, but I didn't let her drink, I didn't let her do drugs with me. I wasn't allowing it, and I think by you allowing her to stay there. I think the problem is, is in my opinion, there's ultimately no one to blame for my sister's addiction besides my sister. However, my mom and my dad both enable her in different ways. You give her that sense of security where she can continue this lifestyle and she knows if she needs somewhere to stay, if she needs food, if she needs something, if she needs, it might not always be monetary wise, but if she needs something, you will be there. So having that sense of security, why would she want it? You know, it's maybe harder for her to take that initiative. And then for you, I mean, you know, the things that you've done with her and, you know, what was said on the TV or what you just said now, you know, on right. camera, it's just, you enable her in those ways where, you know, you're her dad, and, and it's sad, and it sucks. It's like, I know you, it's sad. who does do drugs with their daughter? We wouldn't have, you wouldn't have a sister right now if it wasn't for me. She would not be around. But well, you didn't have that, to do well, the how, drugs. How is it that you've saved her? Because <laughs> she she was on the streets, sitting in the, on the curbs. She she came. She didn't live with me all the time. She came with me sometimes. And then for a while, she did stay with me. But she'd be on the street going to these uh, trap houses. You know, they shoot up in these trap houses. She could OD in one. At least what, how I, I had her in my house, a roof over her head. I did monitor her, but like during, the, I worked two jobs. So at, at lunchtime, I'd come home sometimes. I'd say, there were nobody in the house. I'd come home at lunchtime. Here she'd have people in the house partying. You know, I'd kick her out every day of the week, I'd kick her. But I how, her. how did it come that you were actually smoking crack with her? When she's talking, she told me how she's I talking. I did, twice I did. And then you go, Shh, here's I the did. pipe I made a mistake. Everybody makes mistakes. I mean, I mean, you just did this twice. Right. Twice is twice too many. Right. But you did it twice. Right. Um, she would leave for a couple of days or a day or two, come home, throw four or five, six hundred dollars in front of me and say, here, Dad, put this up for me. <laughs> then she'd go in, her, in the back spare bedroom and bring people over and shoot up. And you, but I you knew all this. Twice. She, they, took, they take her to rehab. She lasts two, three days. She walk out. We sent her how many Arizona for rehab. She walks out. Because Cassie, you're saying that you're keeping her alive and keeping her off the streets. She is on the streets and she is selling her body. Correct. Right, but she had some place to go instead of no place to go. 